that I finished the whole subject. <laughs> Was there nothing left unsaid? Oh, well, I just, think. So I was just uh, being with your words for a moment. Uh, um, you. I shouldn't have interrupted. No, it's um, beautiful. I um, I'm just curious as I hear you speaking to Tom for the sake of people that are watching or listening to you for the first time I'm very curious about when you mentioned that you um, as a little girl um, started exploring words and um, the the scent um, how did you did you say that the felt experience of them as opposed to the meaning and I'm really the curious sound. The sound the, the sound. sound so I'm really curious if you could share a little bit more of that yes that journey I, so yeah I'd be happy to I wrote what I call my fairyography, and it's about an elemental, elemental being who goes, takes the opposite journey of Alice. She goes from nature into this dimension through the looking glass, and um, she is confused. She made a, a, a left turn, and it wasn't right, and so um, she has to ultimately, once she figures out what's happened, she has to deconstruct the language to find her way back home again. And that piece, it's called The Rites of Passion of Philomela Nightingale, A Fairy's Tale. And that really tells my story, but on a metaphoric, allegoric level. And I have several chapters available on YouTube. It's quite a large piece. Um, there's some pieces I just love in it. Well, I, I love many, many of them. And it was in a period of my life when I was just doing whatever job would bring in money and uh, working on my own work evenings and weekends. And, and see, there's that word weekend. So what I was discovering as you, if you have any familiarity with my work is that the language is echoing us in ways that weaken us. It's holding up a sonic mirror all the time that is reflecting back to us that life is miserable, that, um, that everything is split and oppositional, and that women are inferior, and that you have to do it exactly right in this one lifetime, or you go to hell forever. It's been not so easy for people to get to remember who they are and to be truly who they are. So I had one of those upbringings of the normal insanity of civilized society. And one of the pieces I have in process is called uh, Being of Sound Mind, How Word Magic Wordplay Saved My Sanity, Awakened My Awareness to the Matrix of Reality and What It Can Do for You. And I haven't had a chance to finish it, but I shall. Everything gets finished in the right moment. It's just astounding how that happens. So I started out in human terms. I started out at three or four, or maybe a little younger. At that age, three or four, I recall saying to my mother, I bet I now know all the words in the English language. And she said, I bet you don't, and spoke a word I'd never heard before. And I said, well, what language was that? So I didn't remember that story until somewhere, where was it? Yeah, somewhere in the early 80s, I shared it with someone. And he said, you ought to send it in to Reader's Digest as, um, a, you know, a smart thing your little niece said. And I, I, you know, I contemplated, was that a smart thing to say? 
because I have absolutely no reflection of my own intelligence uh, from the parents who were threatened uh, by it, I'm sure, and so insecure. And then when I would do very well in school with very little effort, because I could just tune in to my own stream of consciousness, and I would get a good grade, he would tell me, um, anyway, negative things. So I grew up without a mirror. And I was aware of reverberating sounds all around me that were portraying another picture than the one that was intended to be communicated. So I will now tell you the fairy's version of her experience. The first, what I call preamble, and to amble is to saunter, to walk comfortably. So I had one of my many often extraordinarily absurd jobs um, I, where I, I found the word sinecure by chance in the dictionary and it defined my position. It was a well-paying position demanding little or no work. So there were quite a few of those. And on one occasion, alone in a now deserted office, I guess I was there to answer phones, which never rang, but I took a hit of grass and a little piece I'll share right now came through. I call it preamble. <clears throat> Do you know that I flutter with butterflies? That my heart beats like hummingbird wings? Do you know I'm the kind of a natural mind that knows what the hummingbird sings? May I give you a tour of the garden? Just once through and you too will see that the Lord has just granted your pardon. You've been given permission to be. So that was the only little poem I can think of that wrote itself. Uh, the others, they've given me hints and, and we've co-created the rest. But at that time, when I recited it to myself, reading it for the first time after writing it, I said, wow, that's my grandmother fairy in the tea garden voice. And I was a young woman in my early 30s. So the idea of self-belief was extremely foreign to me. I could say self-be-a-leaf. I identified so closely with the plant kingdom. But to believe in this self was hypocrisy, it seemed to me. Similarly, I did not know what garden I was giving anyone a tour of. And then years later, I realized it was the garden of verses I created. And one of the reasons I wrote in verse a lot, now I have digressed enormously, and obviously I can keep going nonstop. And this might not be the direction you would like to take the conversation. And I know there are others who might also like to speak. So I am stopping in this moment to see where you might like to go.